the conversation throughout much of late February and early March was that Tom Brady would be a great fit in San Francisco and the 49ers might actually want to twitch in that direction because of a lack of belief in Garoppolo. And what fed that was the fact that there was so much running going on to get San Francisco to the Super Bowl in which there was a certain wide open wide receiver towards the end of that game that got airmailed by Jimmy Garoppolo. Is there any there there? Is there any smoke, any fire in that part of the conversation about Garoppolo with the 49ers, Emmanuel Sanders? I don't I don't think so. And being in that locker room and being a part of that organization, I think they love Jimmy and I love Jimmy. Uh, you want to talk about a guy who who is the ultimate leader, a guy who – yeah, he might have his mistakes, but Rich, you see this guy, he'll throw three interceptions. You go and talk to him, and he'll just be like, oh, well, like I just got to keep firing it in. I got to keep firing it in. He doesn't budge. And I've seen many quarterbacks when they – when they, I've never seen Jimmy go in the tank. I've seen many quarterbacks, they throw two interceptions, and they go in the tank, and I'm just like, oh, snap. Like, let me go and talk to this guy. I never had to have that moment with Jimmy. I just think uh, right now, like with Jimmy – uh, it's, it's, you know, coming and being a backup with some Tom Brady and leaving the Patriots organization and coming over to San Fran. The moment that this guy got in San Fran, he turned the, the organization around. They weren't winning games. And then he, he, he gets into the lineup mid-trade and it went six games in a row. And then he tears his ACL. And it's really his first season starting as a, as a quarterback. Really his first season starting, a full season as a quarterback, and takes his team to the Super Bowl. And, and for me, I just don't think it's fair, you know, because you see a lot of guys, and they're under scrutiny, but you just got to give Jimmy time, you know, give him time, give him opportunity. I just think that right now everybody's pressing the gate, pre- you know, they, they're pressing the gas on him to try to speed up the process, but you can't speed up time. Time is going to show, you know, what this guy is about. And, and, and if you go and look at his win percentage and you look at his win record as a starter, it's like 80% or something. And so I, I, I remember um, it was a couple games that I, I looked over at Jimmy and was like, this guy is a winner. You know, this guy is a winner. You check his, you check his record, you check his win percentage, he's a winner. You know, at the end of the day, you know, our running game was our running game. We were able to run the ball and we were able to win games, but that's not the go to say that it, it was because of Jimmy Garoppolo. It was because why change it? Why try to prove a point that, oh, our quarterback can throw the ball when we can run the ball for 300 yards on the team and win by 30 or 40 points? And so, you know, it was plenty of games where Jimmy, had, we had to rely on his arm. You go back to the New Orleans Saints game, we were down 21 points, and Jimmy came in and we came back and we, we were slinging the ball all over and he, converted, you know, the deep ball to me and the third and I think seven to uh, uh, George Kittle. And he was just making throws and we won games. And we won games off Jimmy Arms and we won games off, off the run game. And so I just think that, you know, with time, they just got to give Jimmy time. But what I see right now is just pure greatness based off his win percentage and his, his, his character and the way that this guy comes to work every day. Well, that is definitely a full-throated support of, of Jimmy G right there. Walk me through that play in the Super Bowl I was referring to. That ball's in the air. Are you thinking this is a touchdown? I'm, I'm going to have the game-winning uh, yeah. Super Bowl. What, walk oh, me through that yeah. one. You know, and, and, and that play, I, it, it's crazy because, you know, that, that play could have been a legendary play for me and Jimmy. But, you know, I, I believe in, in destiny. You know, I just it, it just wasn't our time, you know. I feel like it was the chief time and kudos to them. But, Man, I remember um, I, Kyle called a play. I remember coming out, and I, I see the corner. He's low. I'm just like, oh, I'm about to fly past this dude. I'm like, just get up on his toes. Do not rush it. And I hear Jimmy say, all right, and I go, and I beat the corner. And then I look, and I see the safety, and I start running. I see the ball in the air, and I'm like, oh, this is a touchdown. And probably about two or three steps after I saw the ball in the air, I was like, holy shit. Man, I'm like, he, it, it, it's too far. It's too far. And, you know, I ended up trying to get it, and the guy tripped me up and ended up falling and clapping my hands because I knew that was an opportunity for us to capitalize and, you know, win the game. But I didn't I didn't think the game would be over based off that play because we had another play. But, right. Uh, it just it just wasn't our time, you know. And, and you know, Jimmy, Jimmy knows it, and I know it. You know, that was an opportunity – of a lifetime for us to capitalize on, but it didn't happen. And so we move on, you know, I don't, I don't have no, any resentment. You know, I don't say, Oh, Jimmy's a bad quarterback because of one play, you know, it just didn't go our way. So, it, you know, it is what it is. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, what was he like in the huddle right after that? Just moving on just to, to I guess, put a, a, yeah. a button oh, yeah. on this. We moved on and then, uh, 
after the game, I had sold him out by the hotel. He just walked up to me and he was just like, man, like, and I was like, Jimmy, look, but I was like, dude, the whole world is going to try to beat you up over this pass. And I told him, I said, bro, like, I love you. I said, I love you. And then, bro, I was like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just one play of many plays that we've made. We've made that play over and over in practice. It is what it is. It just wasn't destined for us to be. And so, you know, and Jimmy, one of the, he's one of those types. He's not going to beat himself. Bro. He's going he's gonna to look at it just like me because, you know, if you sit up and you beat yourself up over something that you can't control anymore, you're only harming yourself. And so he's one of those guys, he's going to be able to put it in the rearview mirror and move on and look forward to the next opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I was going to finish up our conversation with uh, our question of the day, which is, you know, Apple has come up with the technology to allow somebody to take back a text if they sent it in the wrong way or the wrong person. <laughs> and what would be the sports moment that you would take back if you could hit unsend or take back? Is that the one from your whole life career or is there another one, Emmanuel? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Definitely that play. If I can get that back and- to connect on a perfect pass and run to the end zone, you know that's that's a legendary moment. You know, Rich, you know what that means. You know what that means that for a receiver and for a quarterback, that's 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 a play that they're running over and over on NFL field. You know, it's it's that clutch. And, you know, it, it, unless you know Patrick Mahomes would have went down with I think like what the forty some seconds left or something, right, or or a minute or something left and scored. If we would have won that game and connected on that path, that's a legendary moment. So definitely that moment, you know, but it wasn't meant to be.